Hello there, Seraphim17 once again. This is my Dark Souls 2 beta playthrough. And I need to say a few things at the beginning of this video to, to make them clear and apparent. Uh, this was when I began recording because I had a tragic turn of events when the beta began. And I wasn't able to, to get my capture software to start working. It just completely died on me. It kept failing every single time I tried. And I tried a lot, guys. I was trying every other time I wasn't moving. So what you've missed so far on this playthrough is me moving through the beginning area with the merchant, the woods with the two heavy fellows, and we are now on the opposite side of those woods. So if you've watched any other beta footage before, you've pretty much seen the areas I've passed, and um, I passed them quite easily because I've played Dark Souls before, I was aware of those areas thanks to what I'd seen, and I just, you know, played them intelligently, took them slowly, and I got through there, and my capture device came online now, so this is why you're seeing this. Another thing I need to point out is these will be in 10 minute um, instances, these videos, A, because at this moment in time I'm having problems with my computer, so rendering them will be easier that way, uploading them will be easier because I'm having internet problems, you know, a mixture of misfortune is making these videos shorter, but at least you get a couple more that way, and it's something to look forward to. And then the final thing is that I have not watched this footage since I played it, and this was the final beta test that I got into, that you're watching right now, I believe it was in November, was it not? And we're now in February, so I intentionally did not watch this so that I could defamiliarize myself with Dark Souls 2, so that I can watch it and I can give you my impressions and my thoughts with this, uh, my honest gameplay. And if anybody's curious as to what you're seeing here, you're not going to see any edits, really, at all. This is literally going to be the entire you know, two and a half hours of the beta that I managed to record. Uh, there's not going to be any fanciness to make me look better than I am. There's not going to be any fanciness to make me look worse than I am. It's just going to be as honest as possible. So, the, the cliffside that we're on right now leads to a boss fog. And I already knew this before playing. But what I didn't know was just how dense the enemies were at this point. And you'll, you'll notice I look like I'm playing as the dual wielder, but that's not what I am. I am the night guy off the cover. The standard warrior class with the Pursuer's Greatsword, which is the sword I'm using right now. And I picked this for a good reason. It was the same class that I beat the Mirror Knight with, so I wanted to play him more. And if you spent a little bit of time in the forest, you could actually find the armor for the dual-wielded swordsman guy. And I decided to put it on because I thought it looked really cool. So I'm looking through my, my gloves at this moment in time just to see the difference in the stats. I was curious to see how they affected poise because even in a full suit of armor, I don't know if this is just for beta reasons or for testing reasons, but in the full suit of armor as the standard main character guy, I did not have enough poise to, to, to not be staggered by almost anything. I think my poise was, was like 20 or something like that. It might not have even been that high. Like I say, it's been quite a long time since I played. But it was weird. So I, I hope that it's, you know, just for the sake of the beta. Because if it isn't, it would seem incredibly strange. But pushing down here, there's a rope bridge to my right just there that leads to an alternative way to get to where I am. Uh, it involves going through a darkened catacomb area with scorpions and... Necromancers, which I really do not recommend, because, well, I'm not going to say that because I don't want to spoil too much, but this is me trying to get a couple of parries with this guy. As you can see, they do a decent amount of damage, but I think it only looks decent because of how tiny my life is, and you'll notice that on my life bar there's kind of a, a slider that's not quite to the top, and that represents deaths. When you die, your maximum capacity for life in, in hollow form is obviously decreases with each death. And I killed the guy then to try and lure them both out because it's a bit of a trap. And you'll notice they, they are chasing me. And the AI is, is much improved in some ways. Like, a lot of people have mentioned that you can't backstab anymore, which is not true. It's just harder to do. You know, everything is a little bit more tricky to do because the AI responds a lot quicker. You know, they're a lot more cunning. Also, you'll notice my Estus Flask is, is of average speed. It's not too quick, it's not too slow. And I have the live gems. 
but I really like this sword. It's a really cool sword. It's got a good move set. It's it doesn't feel as powerful as I feel it should feel, but I think this is all due to this build. The beta build is going to be so different to the main game in almost every aspect, because I do believe it will be tweaked in some ways to try and make it a more specific kind of experience. Just like the, the E3 demo that I played, you know, that was tailored in ways to make it much more challenging than I believe it should have been. But I found a key over there, and I remembered that there was a door back here, and it leads to a bonfire, so... There's the, the new lighting of the bonfire sequence, which I think looks pretty damn awesome. You'll see I'm level 28, and I put every single point I had, I believe, into agility. You'll notice I'm... Oh, I think I put a point into strength then. That might be so I can use the Zweihander, because the Zweihander is a sword that requires more strength, and I wanted to test it out. That's exactly why I just did that, folks, if you're wondering. So this is the, the Zwei, and there's an attack that you'll definitely remember. And it swings really fast. Wickedly fast. So I'm trying out its movesets. And I do love the particles. I do love the effects when you land a hit. It really gives it the impression of weight. That right there is a two-handed parry attempt. At the beginning of the video when I was introducing it, you'll have seen me do that to a guy with the other sword. Very difficult to time, though. Because it's incredibly slow and it relies on prediction. It doesn't rely on like reflex because the enemies attack too fast so I think I'm probably gonna try and parry him to see if there's a different animation for the sword but I can't really tell what I'm doing apparently not I'm just gonna swing him and mash him a little bit so that right there is an interesting one you'll notice I had my shield up and I started getting hit and I don't know if that is an instance where I started getting hit and I don't understand it, or I perhaps went to attack and in the frame of data between lowering my weapon to attack, he hit me. I couldn't quite tell, but that was a parry. And the, the parries, I'm not feeling them. They're fun to land because it's new timing and anything that's new is challenging and I like challenge. But the animations so far are doing nothing for me because they're all the same. They're all the exact same thing. And I know they won't be on the main game, but from what I've experienced, there's been very little deviation from just a really redundant stab, which just, it's not satisfying at all. I go for a parry there to predict it, and he does the double slash, which was a little bit too quick for me. You'll notice I didn't bounce off the tree. That is the running attack. Really cool looking here. Look how quick this dude is. I go swoop round for a backstab. Go for it now. See that? That is one of the big problems with the backstabs, that guys. Because of the way that they're now activated, they miss a lot. And it's a really good thing for PvP, not really a good thing for PvE, because you land them when you shouldn't land them, and you miss them when you should. So I don't know if that's going to be something that you just learn, like a bit of a learning curve, or if it's legitimately something that might get tweaked. Because... How the fuck did I miss just then? <laughs> Absolutely crazy. But there's two paths here. The lower paths leads around to... I believe it's the bottom of the waterfall where the Skeleton King is. There's a parry. I swap to the other weapon to see if it gives me time to repost, and you'll notice I didn't have the, the enough time in the frame to do it, so that might have been me being too slow. I'm not too sure. Be very careful here that the sneakiness of the enemies is, is pretty brutal. And there's a lot of guys here too. I didn't realise how many there were. There's an archer shooting at you and the archers on the, the beta at least, they fire so quick it's kind of brutal. The arrows are almost instantaneous, they're super accurate and they do a lot of damage. So uh, there was a bit of a stun lock. You'll notice that each successful hit got weaker and it also pushed them back. So one of the ways it seems that they're trying to fight stun locking is the knockback. They're trying to push you out of the range of the stun lock. I'm not too sure if it'll be a good idea, but we will find out, obviously. Oh, here's a standard dude. Am I trying to... Because a lot of times circling, for me personally, in this beta, was not for backstabs. It was to get out of the front range of their attack. There's me trying to do a roll backstab. And I got it. A rolling... Well... Technically, it was a freehand unlocked backstab, but it worked. So, anybody wondering, can we still do the, you know, super agile backstabs by exploiting the way the movement works? It is possible. It's just a lot more difficult. 
So thank you for watching, guys. Plenty more parts to come. And as always, you take care now.